The origin of birds has been a classical challenge in uh, evolutionary biology. Um, traditionally, uh, for most of the 20th century, uh, birds were so different from other vertebrates that they were really considered to be a group apart from uh, other vertebrates, birds and animals, right? And uh, uh, scientifically what that came to mean is that birds were a kind of reptile with no particular relation to any specific reptiles. However, uh, in the late 20th century, uh, scientists who were interested in explicitly reconstructing the tree of life, that is the genealogy of species, uh, building the tree of life, um, uh, discovered that uh, birds evolved from a group of theropod dinosaurs. Those are the, um, the big bipedal meat eaters uh, like Velociraptor and T-Rex, etc. Uh, right? um, this uh, opinion was extremely controversial at the time and led to uh, a, a, a protracted debate for decades uh, between the, uh, the, uh, the, the theropod origin or the dinosaur origin of birds uh, and what came to be known as the dino deniers, uh, folks that uh, rejected the dinosaur origin of birds uh, but were unable to explicitly articulate an alternative uh, uh, hypothesis uh, for the origin of birds. Right? Um, this is really a case study of how uh, scientific revolutions happen, right? Because uh, uh, er early on, this seemed like a crackpot theory, uh, but over uh, basically about two decades, three decades, uh, the evidence uh, started to pile up uh, until finally it was irrefutable. Uh, of course, the, the uh, final and most dramatic evidence of this were the origin of feathers. Uh, and when people found uh, um, uh, feathers on theropod dinosaurs uh, like uh, close relatives of Velociraptor, uh, the guy who chased the kids around in the kitchen in, <laughs> in Jurassic Park, th then people really realized, wow, birds are dinosaurs. And in this sense, they didn't just come from dinosaurs, they are dinosaurs living amongst us, 10,000 species uh, 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 found on all continents around the world. Um, so uh, the answer to how scientific revolutions happen is always uh, do good science. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and since science is a self-repairing uh, process, that is it improves itself uh, with the scrutiny and new evidence, um, that progress uh, has really led to uh, knowledge in this case. The pattern uh, of progress in uh, modern science is, um, is incontrovertible. However, one of the downsides of progress is uh, a kind of uh, false scientific uh, confidence. Uh, based on previous, confidence, uh, previous results, uh, one can uh, start uh, an investigation or an inquiry with uh, um, a sort of a priori or from the beginning certainty about how it should or is going to work out, right? This can be a real problem. Uh, in fact, uh, because it's so congruent with what uh, human minds have evolved to do, which is to uh, uh, assign agency uh, to patterns uh, and, uh, and, and, and thereby learn about mechanisms in the world. Um, However, uh, as a scientist, it's important to uh, remain open-minded. Uh, there are some structures in how we think about science that allows us uh, to, uh, to uh, catch ourselves, if you will, and make sure that we're not making a mistake. One of them is to always have a null hypothesis or some uh, a simultaneous model or explanation of the data at hand, uh, which posits that nothing special is happening. Right? Uh, and uh, so uh, before we can conclude that our favorite uh, nifty idea is actually occurring, uh, we have to be able to reject the idea that nothing special is going on. Right? Uh, an example of null hypotheses include things like that cigarettes don't cause cancer. Right? In order to confirm that cigarettes cause cancer, we need to reject the null hypothesis that they don't. Um, and, um, and so uh, that's part of the, 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 the structure of science. Now, lots of people think of the null hypothesis as simple or simpler. But in fact, if cigarettes don't cause lung cancer, then all those cases of lung cancer are individually different and complicated. So the null hypothesis can actually be more complicated explanation than 
the, than the, uh, than the uh, main hypothesis, right? Or the, 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 the signal hypothesis. So um, um, in science, especially in evolutionary science, uh, we have found that it's really important to uh, overcome uh, our uh, rational desire to see meaning and direction in every data set uh, and ask the question, do we know if anything special is really happening?